Uh, my name is Jennifer Keating, and I am one of the senior um, education consultants with Britannica. And we're going to talk about Britannica School, which you all have access to, courtesy of the State Library. We're really thankful and grateful to be a part of this whole initiative. Um, it's really an exciting uh, kind of time for all of us. My contact information is up on the screen. So for those of you at home or watching remotely, uh, there's my contact information. You can email me directly at jkeating at eb.com with a particular question about today. If you just have a question in general, you can also email training at eb.com. But I don't want to dis um, discourage anyone from emailing me with any questions at all. Please feel free to email me anytime. If it's about usage or access, I can. if I can't answer it, I can at least put you in contact with the people who can't answer it. For those of you sitting here in front of me, that contact information is in the back of your handout. So all that information is back there for you. Um, at Britannica, our mission is simple. We want to help ignite curiosity and spread the joy of discovery. Everyone remembers... When I, whenever I tell people I work with Britannica, the first thing that they say is, oh, we had that when I was a kid. I love my Encyclopedia Britannica growing up. So we're hoping to kind of keep that um, momentum moving through students today, even though they are digital citizens. Um, they don't necessarily look through books the way that we used to look through books. We want to kind of keep them excited and continue to grow and be curious. So here's just a quick agenda. We're going to talk a little bit about Britannica School. Take a tour of Britannica School. We'll look at all three levels, elementary, middle, and high school. And then we'll also talk about um, Britann My Britannica, which is a tool within Britannica School that teachers and students can use. You can set up your own personal accounts. So don't do that yet. We'll all have time to do that later on. And then we'll also talk about resource packs. Um, along the way, we'll be have plenty of hands-on time. We'll have to, plenty of time to tinker around and look at things. Uh, so don't worry about that. You'll walk out an expert, I promise. And then we'll also take a look at the Escolar, which you also have access to, courtesy of the State Library. Um, and then the end is evaluation and wrap-up. I really don't have an evaluation or wrap-up, but um, I just felt like I needed to put that in there. Uh, <laughs> so if there are any questions at the end, that's where you can put them. Uh, <laughs> um, before I start, how many elementary folks do I have in here today? Okay, in middle school, high school, anyone who does the entire district or a K-8, K-12, all right, all right, we've got some, not all heroes wear capes, right? What's they tell us? Um, there's access information again, although Deb went over it pretty well before, but there's um, the link you can go to to get this all set up and running. If you want to just um, open, if you're in your uh, laptop right now, you can actually go to school.eb.com. And that should take you right into Britannica School. It shouldn't ask you for, it should not prompt you for a username or a password. Is it? Okay. Um, so what we're going to use today is, I have, I, I emailed Jim with a list of all of the usernames and passwords for um, schools in this area or the, in this county. So I've got those. Um, but instead of doing that now, I can do that later on. So for today's training, we're just going to use CAPD. And that should get you right into Britannica School and also Escolar. But you'll just use this for today. This won't be your permanent remote access information going forward, just for today. And if you have it and don't remember it, I have that for you. If you don't have it yet, we can get you set up. Um, but you'll definitely you'll need a new one after today. All right. Uh, once you plug that in, is everyone seeing a page that looks like this? Okay, great. Don't move and don't do anything. Don't go anywhere. Just stay there for a second because I've got a couple of things I just want to go over with you real quick. Yeah, it's just CAPD, like uh, California Public Professional Development. Oscar, just let me Everything is actually IP authenticated if you go to the county office portal. So that would... Okay. Um, the information is right here, but for training purposes, including some folks who may be at home doing this remotely, go ahead and use the temporary training one that Jen. Um, Thank you. Sure, but you can also go ahead and, and, and try to use that here. This, usually for that uh, in the afternoon with the ProQuest. Um, also, with uh, for those of you sitting here, you can access Britannica School through um, Clever. Uh, and oh shoot, I always forget the other one. 
diversity one canvas. Um, so if, or if you use those, um, let me know and I can put you in touch with our tech support person and he could get you up and running so it's as nice and smoothly in integrated. I just actually got an email from someone from Escondido who had questions about it. So our tech support team was really wonderful. Okay, so a little bit about Britannica School before we start. Um, Britannica School is a collection of, it's an encyclopedia, right? So it's a collection of informational text, art, articles about different topics. And one of the things that we're really talking about this year in California, and really, with every customer I'm working with, their, their big push is media literacy, information literacy, that kind of thing. One of the things they have questions about is where does this information come from? Britannica, where do your articles come from? So I always like to just kind of kick this off by saying we have a really um, intense, rigorous, um, uh, way of kind of putting together our articles. It, we are 250 years old. It's the same rigorous um, process that we've had since we started in, in 1786 uh, or 1768. Um, so first of all, we have our information architect who kind of decides what information we need, what are, we, what are people looking for, what are some hot topics that we need to make sure are up to speed. Then they send that information to our, um, the, the appropriate subject editor for that topic. That person does the research, they write up the article, they do all that, that important work, and then it goes on to fact checkers who double check everything, make sure everything is correct. Um, then that goes to the supervisory editors, make sure, yes, this is exactly what we need, or no, we need some more information about this particular part of the topic. And then once that's all edited and up to date, then it goes to our copy editors who make sure all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, and then the whole thing starts again. So every article goes through 10 sets of eyes before it gets posted online. Another nice thing about having Britannica School online is that when something important happens, we can update that information right away, um, which is really important. Um, when Toni Morrison passed away, we had her article updated that morning. Um, so we can really have that information kind of updated and ready for users to use. So I just want to put this in front of you so when your students say, well, we're, what is this information? Why should I use Britannica? Here are some things you can kind of point to to help them and let them know that Britannica is a great resource. Some other things about Britannica School, uh, just a couple of highlights. We have over 145,000 encyclopedia articles across the three different levels. Um, we have adjustable reading levels in every article as well. So if you have students who want more information, they can jump up a level. And really importantly, if you've got students who are struggling with the text, they can dip down a level um, and, and, get, and make sure they can stay on top of that text and that information. We've got a great collection of downloadable photos and videos. Um, we have articles that are correlated to the uh, California state standards, primary source documents at the middle and high school levels, and even though they're not at the elementary level, elementary people, whatever you see in the middle or high school, you have access to all of those tools. You have access to everything on this website. Nothing is off limits. So feel free to, to kind of, um, the case method is what I used a big fan of when I used to be a teacher, which is copy and steal everything. So if you see something you like, in the middle school level, go up there and grab it. If you see something, a picture in the high school level, go up and grab it. Take advantage of it. Um, we have some great resources to help you with STEM, STEAM, and STREAM topics and subjects in the classroom, things like, of course, the informational articles. We've got some really great images and videos and things like that. We've got a read aloud feature in every article and also the Google Translate tool in every article as well. So especially in an area like this where there are so many different um, countries being represented by your students every day, we've got some really neat tools that they can use to make sure they can understand what they're reading and also their families can understand. The World Atlas, which is um, low-key, one of my favorite features in Britannica School. We'll take a look at that. It's really fun to play with. And the Merriam-Webster Dictionary is built in as well. And we have My Britannica, which I mentioned at the beginning. My Britannica is uh, a tool within Britannica School. You basically have to create your own personal account. But once you have your account set up, you can actually collect articles and photos and videos that you find within Britannica School. And you can also make what we call resource packs. So if you are covering um, the state of California with your students, you can make a resource pack about California, pull in all of those articles, photos, and videos, and then share that resource pack electronically with your students with one easy link. So we'll take a look at that today as well. Um, and of course, home access and many, many other things. So let's go ahead. I know you are probably all there already. 
but we're going to start here at SpartanicaSchool.com. Uh, I'm from the Midwest, so you can, you know, I apologize for my flat A's already. I can hear myself doing it. It just drives me crazy, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> well, here we are on the homepage. We're going to start at the elementary level and then move into the middle and the high. So we'll take a look at every homepage so you can get a, a sense of what's available to you and your students, regardless of what uh, level you teach at or what level your library is at. So on the elementary homepage, it's very bright. It's very colorful. It is designed for our younger readers. As you know, we need to really kind of grab their attention and hold on to it. And so we have a lot of bright, colorful things happening here on the homepage. So we're gonna take a look at all of these tools here in just a moment. What I wanna do first is in that search box at the top is where you can plug in your search term. Uh, so for today, I'm gonna to plug in the term elephant. And I always recommend just clicking on this little magnifying glass once you type in your term. If you click on the recommended article link, that takes you directly into the article, and that's great, but you also might miss some of the things that we have on the um, search results page. So I always recommend that you click on that magnifying glass so that you go to the search results page. And the search results page for the middle school and high school will look like this as well. Not a little less colorful, but the same general uh, idea. Uh, you can see across the top here, we have these three tabbed areas. We've got level one, level two, and level three. Level one corresponds to all the elementary resources for this topic. Level two will show us all of the middle school resources for this topic. And level three will show us all the high school resources for this topic. So for those students gathering information, they might be curious about what's at the other two levels. I also really like this for teachers as they're pulling together you know, materials for their next lesson. They can easily see what's available for, each, uh, for that topic at each level without having to run three separate searches. But again, level one, elementary, level two, middle school, level three, high school. You can also see over here on the left-hand side, we have all kinds of um, uh, content available too. So it's not just encyclopedia articles, but we are gonna come back to that in just a moment. We also have a really nice collection of images. These are rights cleared images. You can feel good about using any of these images. Um, to find one, just, just click on that image and it opens right up for you. You can download that image just by right-clicking in that image and then save image as, or whatever, um, <clears throat> whatever uh, uh, search uh, you might be using will have maybe some different verbiage, but there will always be that sort of uh, save option. So you can just save that directly to your computer if you want. You can, if you are on an iPad or an iPhone or an Android phone, you can hold your finger on that image and it will save it to your cam the camera roll in your device. So there are a couple different ways that you can grab those images and save them. Um, over here on the right, we have a couple different things. First, we have this little star, and that star will allow you to favorite this to your My Britannica account if you have one set up. So again, we'll, we'll talk more about My Britannica later on, but whenever you see that star, that just means, oh, you found something you can put into My Britannica. Below that is the print option, so you can print out any of these images. We have the email option just below that, so you can email that image to another Britannica user. Although sometimes with the email option, it does get stuck in spam or junk mail. So if you do email to someone, just make sure, follow up with them. Oh, by the way, I sent this to you. Did you get this so that they, so it doesn't get stuck anywhere where they can't see it. Below that email uh, option, we have this little checkbox, and this is one of my favorite things about Britannica too. This will give you the automatic uh, citation for this image. So especially for your middle schoolers and high schoolers, you can uh, select your citation type. We've got MLA, APA, um, Harvard, and Chicago manual style. So whatever you use, probably more than likely uh, you'll have the MLA. And you can see just below that is the citation information. You just copy that and drop it right into your works cited or right into your bibliography. And you'll find that in every article, every photo, every video in Britannica School. Uh, below that, we have this little link, and that will give you the direct link to this image. So let's say you wanna hyperlink some text, or you wanna send a student directly to this image, kind of go bypass everything and just send them directly to this image, you can share this image right here, this under this little link. 
And then below that, we also have Google Classroom. So if you use Google Classroom when you're students, uh, you can easily add any of these images right to your Google Classroom account and then share it out to whichever uh, group of students you want to share it to. And those tools you'll find in every image here. And then I also want to just remind you, again, along with the articles, you can also look at the different images for the middle school and high school levels as well. You can kind of see across the top there. And I really like this one um, because especially when you're looking for images, you tend to have more in level two and three than we do in level one. So if, if you're looking for images specifically, <clears throat> don't forget to check out levels two and three for that topic so you can make sure you're finding everything. Uh, just below the images, we have videos. Again, these are Britannica videos. Rights cleared so you can feel good about using them. Um, what I like about any video with um, narration will have the text of that narration just below the video so students can kind of read the text and listen at the same time. And again, over here on the right hand side, all of those tools, those usage tools that we looked at earlier. So you can save to My Britannica, you can email it, um, the citation information is there, the direct link. Here is the download features. You can actually download this as an MP4 file to your computer. Um, and then there's the Google Classroom here as well. So you can put that right in your Google Classroom. And then of course you can either download it over here or you can just stream it for your students, whatever works best for your classroom or your library. And again, the other uh, levels well, across the top will have some different videos to choose from. Uh, we have the dictionary here. This is the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. So students can use Britannica School as an online dictionary. They can look words up. You can see here, there's a little pronunciation, and I think I turned my sound off. Let me turn this back on so you can hear it. It's gonna give me some attitude. There we go. Elephant. So you can hear Elephant. the correct pronunciation about these different words that students are reading every day. I also love this, of course, for students who are learning how to speak and read English. This is a great tool to help them really get a grasp of the different vocabulary that they're reading every day or hearing every day. Below that, we've got some journals and magazines, courtesy of EBSCO. So if you want to present some additional text to your students, you can kind of browse through here to see if there's anything available. A lot of these articles will actually have a PDF version available too. So if you do see one with a PDF version, you can just click on that version and the PDF version will open up for you. And then you can download that PDF right to your computer and then use that with your students. We also have a collection of websites. These are websites that our editors have pulled together that just have some additional information about that topic. And again, easy to share. They've all been um, sort of uh, run through the gamut and um, given the seal of approval by our editors. Uh, if whoever are looking through there and you see a link, that's because that happens sometimes. Links get broken and we don't know about it. Um, just send us an email and we can fix that for you. And then below that, you can see where it says lesson plans. And again, we'll get to this later on, but these are lesson plans that were created by other teachers and librarians while they were using My Britannica. So that's what those lesson plans are. So if you want to see them, um, you need to be logged into your educator account in order to look at those. So kids will never be able to see them, but teachers, uh, you'll be able to see them if you have an account. So we'll talk more about that when we talk about My Britannica. And then down here at the bottom, we have the Lex Isle filtering. So you can actually, uh, if you're looking at the articles, you can actually set the Lex Isle filter. So if you're looking for a student and you know what you want to set that number to, you can do that and it will just bring back articles within that, that range that you set for that student. Um, any questions about any of these additional content types over on the left-hand side of the search results page? Pretty, pretty, yes, question? When you go to the magazine, mm-hmm. The PDF? PDF version. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what if you want to cite that magazine? So you would cite, that's a good question. You would cite it just as you would any, a magazine that you found online at a website. So I'm, so the, for, there's something, I'm not exactly clear on it, did not really ever made it clear, but there's something about having, um, 
we can't cite them because it comes from an outside source. So we don't, we can't cite them on Britannica as ours because they're not. So you would just cite this as though it was a magazine you found online and you can look in the manual and it will tell you exactly, um, like it tells you what website to put in there, but you would just cite it as a magazine article you found online. Does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. If I were an element, mm -hmm. right. If I saw that article, how would I cite that? So you would if we just ask. Um, could you Google it? MLA. Um, or online, I should say. And then you would just here's the MLA or Easy Bib. You can and you can find any of the links there. Um, we would have to go online, and the librarian ahead of time or the teacher ahead of time could point that out to them. But yeah, it's it's just you would just cite it as though it's a magazine you found online. Okay. Yeah. I have the link for that, so I'll just look at it. Yeah, I, this is this is I'm glad you asked that. This has been a bugaboo of mine for years, but they they've said that it's not it's not out of, it's out of their hands. Yeah, there's no checkbox there, and it's not something we've wanted to do it for a long time. It's just out of our hands. We can't really do it. So, the best the best answer that we have for that is just cite it as though it's a magazine you found online. Any, that's a great question. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to move into the article then, so we can look at those article tools, and then after that, we'll give you a little bit of time to kind of play around a little bit. Um, so, I'm going to go into the article about the elephant. This is the elementary article about the elephant. And all of the tools that we look at in this article, these are tools you're also going to find at the middle school and at the high school level. So don't think that because we're looking at elementary, you, you don't need to pay attention because all the tools over there on the right hand side, you're also going to see at the middle school and high school. So I want to make sure everyone feels comfortable with everything. Um, so for the elementary articles, as you can see, very bright, very colorful. Again, the middle school and high school has a different interface. So if anyone's concerned about um, high school students not wanting to look at this necessarily, don't worry, you don't, they won't have to look at that necessarily. Um, but it is bright, bright and colorful for our younger users. You can also see that we've uh, chunked the information here so that it's not too overwhelming or just a big block of text that students are looking at. They can kind of work through the article at their own pace and you know pick up or leave and pick up where they, um, where they left at any time. Um, another, so just to get to the different, just click on the, the headline there and that will open up those different sections for you. You'll see also there's a little play button here at the top of each. And when you click on that. Elephants are the largest living land animals. There are three species or kinds, the African savanna elephant, the African forest elephant, and the Asian elephant. So there's a voice that reads that out loud for students to hear one sentence at a time. So students can put on those headphones and listen to that being read out loud. And we recently just updated the voice in there, so it sounds really great, I think. Um, but if you have any questions about that, you can let, let me know. Um, and you'll find that in each section here, kind of, so they can listen to each section at a time. Another tool that I really love here and that you'll find in every article is something called the Quick Click Dictionary. So basically, when students are reading through text, if they see a word that they're unfamiliar with, they don't know what it means, they can just double click on that word. So for example, if the word is extinct, I can double click on that word, and it gives me the definition for that word. Also, it gives me the extinct, it gives me the, def, or the a pronunciation and the Spanish translation for that word as well. Um, so all those tools are built right in there, and I love that, especially in the content areas for those students who are, you know, struggling with text or they're struggling with kind of new ideas or a lot of times in science there's so many new terms, term, there's so much terminology, there are new terms every day. This is a great way for students to kind of keep on top of those terms. Um, up across the top, you'll notice we've got the numbers one and two, and that actually lets you change the reading level. So if you've got some students, especially in the fourth or fifth grade, who want more information, they're looking for maybe more, some more challenging text, they can jump from level one into level two. And it takes them into the high school interface there. 
which of course will have more challenging texts, more information, longer sentences, that kind of thing. And if those elementary kids want to stay in the middle school interface, that's totally fine. That's not against the rules at all. Um, so there, there, are, there are always going to be those kids who don't want the, the little kid interface. They want a, you know, the middle school interface, and that's totally fine if they want to hang out here. And then from here, they can, again, choose any of those reading levels at the top. But if they want, they can also go back and click, that, back, click the back button to get back into the elementary interface. Uh, over here on the left, I'm sorry, on the right-hand side, uh, we've got some tools. Some of these will look familiar again because we just saw them when we were looking at the images. But there is that little star, so you can favorite that to My Britannica. You can print out the text of this article, and it will just print out the text for you along with the citation that you've chosen. Um, you can email the article. Of course, there's that citation information again. You can increase and decrease the font, which I really love, especially for a librarian when you're showing text to a large group of students. You can make sure that everyone in the back can see exactly what you're looking at. And then below that is a little globe, and this is the Google Translate tool. And this will translate the article into one of 80 different languages. So if I want to, I can change that language to Bengali. And it changes the text of that, language, of that article, just that article, to Bengali. And what I like about this, of course, it's going to be great for those students in the classrooms who maybe speak English as their second language, those emerging bilingual students. Um, I love this as a home to school piece so that students can go home and show parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, anyone who might be at home, cousins, um, hey, this is what I'm learning about in school today. Isn't this really neat? Or I have to work on this project for school. Can you help me? And then they can kind of get family members from home to help them out on these different projects. So it's a nice way to kind of be more inclusive of family members at home and, of course, those students, um, those bilingual students. When you're done, you can go up here to the top. There's a little X up there. Just click on that, and it'll go back into English for you. A couple of questions that we have. One question is, can this read out loud in that other language? And the answer is no, although technology is you know, kind of uh, evolving all the time, so hopefully that will be something that's in our grasp in the next couple of not too, not too, far, not too distant future. Um, but as of right now, it only reads aloud in English. Um, and the other question uh, is, does it print out in that other language? And the answer there, again, is no. Hopefully, again, that technology is evolving and it will be more available to us uh, down the road. But as of right now, it just prints out and reads aloud in English. But still, it's nice to be able to have that uh, translation option. Uh, there's the Google uh, Classroom button, so you can add this article directly to your Google Classroom account, and also Google Drive. So if you have a Google Drive or your students do, uh, they can add any of these articles directly to their Google Drive to make it easy to access later. And when they do that, it just will show up in an, an envelope or a file that just says Britannica on the main on the My Drive main homepage. So easy to find. Uh, below that, we've got the Teacher tab, and that's is going to show you the alignment between the Britannica articles and the um, content standards for California. So if I want to, I can, over here on the left-hand side, plug in my state, California here. Oh, sorry, uh, if I'm looking at the article about the elephant, below, at the bottom, there should be a gray button that says teacher. Anyone having trouble finding that? Okay. And then that will take you to your little um, supporting resources tab. Um, and here it gives you the Lexile number for this article up here. And then down here is where you can kind of plug in your information to get to the standards that will best support you and your students. So I can plug in, click on US State Standards. Plug in California. And then this will show me all of those California fourth grade standards that this article helps to support. So it's just a few in this case, um, but it's nice for teachers to be able to add that to their lesson plans, copy and paste that into their lesson plans if they want, uh, just to have something to point to. And I, what I also like about this is that it does kind of the cross-curricular thing, so you can do science and you can do language arts. Um, so again, you can kind of point to both of those. 
Any questions about that, the standards correlation? All right. Uh, the one last thing I want to show you here, and I'm going to give you some time to kind of play around a little bit. Over here on the left-hand side, there is an orange button that says or reads related. And these are just related articles. And this is a, one of those kind of simple tools I think is a, a really kind of um, versatile. You can do a lot of different things with it. Uh, students can, of course, use this when they're conducting research. Teachers can use this when they are planning lessons, planning units. They can kind of go in and dig deeper and see, well, what, what's some other content I can bring into my lesson? What are some other links I can share with my students? What are some other things they might be interested in learning about? So when you're putting together your lesson plans in your library about different units, this could be a really great um, tool for you to use. You can kind of see what, other, what are some out, uh, out, out, outliers that students might be interested in. All those tools that we just looked at, you're going to also find in the middle school and high school homepage, with the uh, exception of the teacher tab. We don't have a teacher tab in the high school homepage, but there are still different ways you can find that information, so I'll make sure to point that out to you when we get over there. Um, so real quickly, I'm gonna show you one more thing and then give you a couple of minutes to browse around. And that is across the top, and you'll find this at the top of every homepage here. Um, there's an educators tab. And if you go into there, you can find the curriculum standards browse. So not only can you browse by article, you can browse by standard. So if you plug in your standards here, and your subject area, and your grade level, this will show you all those standards and then suggest articles that you might use when you're trying to tackle those standards with your students. Um, so again, just if you're looking for some different ideas, some different topics to share with your students, that's where you can kind of find that. Okay, so um, middle school and high school folks, we are going to give you time uh, in the next batch, in the next round, um, to look at your articles at your level. But for right now, everyone, um, just kind of stick around on the elementary homepage and run a search. You can look around uh, different topics, but just kind of get a feel for what it's like to run a search, uh, the different resources you'll have whenever you run a search that are available in the articles to test out the quick click dictionary, those kinds of things. And then in a few minutes, we will get back to it. If anyone has any questions, let me know. Uh, I, for fourth grade people, I know we have a, we've, they've done a lot of work recently in adding in information about all the missions. So if you're constantly looking for information about the Spanish missions or California missions, we've got some great information in here. Level two has some really great pictures as well, some images as well. This is a login question, so let oh, me see if I can okay. I can help out. Was the temporary login? Oh, um, she's, oh, she's logged in. You're logged in. Yeah, we haven't created, that's for the My Britannica account. We haven't created those yet. We're gonna do those later. Yeah, you're logged in. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great question, I'll, I'll mention that. Um, for those of you who are watching excitedly at your desk somewhere, or those of you who are inside, um, you can see in the top right corner where it says sign in to My Britannica. We're gonna uh, tackle that later on, so don't feel like you've gotta sign in now or make your account now. Don't worry about that. I promise you we're gonna have time later on to do all that. Oh, really? You're logged into Britannica. Cool. We're hearing some questions about how to connect to your own Google account, how to use My Britannica that she's going to go over in a bit. Anybody else have so quick on, on other things? Oh. Did you log in with CAPD? Or, oh, okay. That's fine. You might have logged in with your own um, school, your, which is, that's good though, because if you did, then um, for some reason it's not turned on for your district, so we need to make sure it's turned on. Um, the Google maybe not is not turned on for your district. What is your district? Na nas national school. Okay. 
Oh, gotcha. Okay. I'll make a note of that. So while Jen takes notes on some of the technical experts in the room, I actually, once you get done writing that note, have a question. Oh, great. Okay. Um, California has adopted a lot of standards. The science standards are really new. Okay. History, social science framework is new. Um, the uh, visual and performing arts standards are brand new. And so how does Britannica deal with that when it comes to each individual state? So we actually work with a company and they do the alignment for us. So once we get the go ahead from the company, then we can upload all those new standards. Um, and I, I've been told that we're all up to speed here, but if anything is out of whack or doesn't look like it's in alignment, let me know and I can go. I've been looking, so I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Although I will say that the visual and performing art standards are really brand new. Um, okay. And I noticed that they seem to be up to date. Um, which okay. is 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 really good, Great. but I mean that's another thing is that you don't have to think of this as only for history social science that These resources can be very dynamic across the subjects um, And you can utilize them to support for example dance music well, even, I mean I was um, a very bad math student, although I don't think that that's what the people say about students anymore. But back in the 80s, I was not a very good math student. Um, but reading about math seemed to help me understand it a little bit better. So we've got tons of articles about mathematicians, theories of, about different mathematic practices, all kinds of articles about math in here that might be helpful to those students who are more literal than uh, spatial, which I guess is how I would describe myself. I've got your national um, school district turn on Google, so I'm going to make sure I send that to my um, tech support person in the next in the afternoon. So hopefully it'll be, be changed by the time you leave here today. <laughs> yeah, listen, me neither. <laughs> I get questions all day long. I just whoop right to Jim Paulson. <laughs> we'll get you up and running. And you'll probably address this, but I know that you said that when you use and translate it doesn't read the article out loud you don't have that option right. what about Spanish um, not in, uh, oh the Spanish database does have that that's what I was yeah. gonna point out <laughs> how many of you have a, um, a need for Spanish in the classroom that are here in attendance you're gonna love the Escalar yeah because I just wanted to put that as a caveat that yes if you do the instant translate on your uh, Britannica school but but Tanaka Scholar is a whole different animal. Yes, it's a whole different database. Uh, are there any questions that popped up? Otherwise, we'll keep on trucking. A good question about accessing issues. Um, one of the school districts here, for whatever reason, their Google tools were popping up. And that's an easy fix on our end. So if you see things like that, just let us know and we can easily fix those issues. Uh, okay, so we've looked at uh, the elementary article. I want to show you just a couple of things on the elementary homepage, and then we're going to move over to middle school and high school. So here on the elementary homepage, as I mentioned earlier, very bright, very colorful. Uh, we want to keep students' attention. Below here, you can see we've got this kind of collection of these little uh, activities. Oh, I'm sorry. So if you want to go to the elementary homepage, just click on the word elementary. Th that's Great question. Thank you so much. The question was, how do I get home? Uh, you'll find at the top uh, where it says elementary. That's how, click on that. We'll take you to the elementary homepage. We have that for middle school and we have that for high school as well. Uh, and then if you want to get to the homepage of Britannica School, just click over here where it says Britannica School. Okay. Uh, so these little, I call them sliders. They change every Monday morning. You get a new batch. And these are just great if you have some time during the week. Uh, you want to ask kids some questions. You maybe want to um, prompt your kids into doing some, you know, quick research. Maybe you have that class after lunch and you just need them to sit down and settle down for a few minutes before you can get into what you're planning on doing with them. So these are all, these are great little activities that you can kind of use that for. And again, they change every Monday morning. Below that we have these great uh, Britannica, um, Explore Britannica tools. 
These tools you'll find on the middle school and the high school homepages as well. And these are just great ways to get your students to use Britannica School. Uh, you can put these into your lesson plans. You can have your students using them for research. Um, for example, we have an article browse and a media browse. We'll take a closer look at these when we get over to the middle school homepage. I don't want to spend all of our time here at the elementary. I want to make sure to kind of spread, the, spread it out a little bit. Um, I do want to make sure to point out that over here we have Britannica Fundamentals. This is only going to be here on the... Um, elementary homepage and this is actually brand new we used to have Britannica learning zone does everyone anyone here remember the Britannica learning zone it was designed specifically for pre-k through second grade students it had different activities some vocabulary tools things like that Britannica learning zone was built in flash and quickly started to fall apart right around 2016 um, so we had to go back and rebuild something for our youngest users and so now we have Britannica fundamentals and we have the read section We've got some Britannica ebooks in here. Some different topics here. Uh, we've got, and I think they're anticipating adding in more. This is kind of just the first um, go round here. So I think they're going to be adding in more books. But for now, we've got five different books you can read through. Uh, we've got the explore section. We've got different biomes around the world. A little video here about deciduous forests. We also have the play button up here. So again, some different games, and we're looking to add some more in here. We just want to see how these kind of worked out for us the first go around. But I think the idea is to add in some more. But we've got language arts and math games in here. And then we have the create area where those younger users can go in and draw, they can paint, they can um, add pictures, a little backdrop. They can choose different backdrops to add pictures in. They can draw a little fish. I know, especially for the little guys, right? Yeah. Oh my, here we go. Oh, well, that was going to be a fish, but now it's not. Now it's just <laughs> that. <laughs> but, oh yeah, thank you. Yeah, see, I was just thinking like a pre-K student. Um, they can change the colors over here, so you can, you can get in there and play around with that a little bit. It's really kind of fun. Um, but yeah, so that's brand new. We're really excited about that. And that's called Britannica Fundamentals. And if you want, you can see it's kind of, it's also, you can just bookmark that on your computers. So when the little guys come in, they can go right to that if that's easier for them. Uh, or you can have them start from the top and, and go into the elementary homepage, whatever you prefer. But you'll find them right down here. There's a little, our little otter friend is kind of the face of Britannica Fundamentals. Uh, any questions there? Okay, so what I'm going to do now, we're going to move into the middle school. And to do that, I'm going to see where it says Britannica School up here in the top left corner. I'm just going to click on that and then jump into the middle school. And here's the middle school homepage. It's much more reserved and appropriate for our mature 6th, 7th, and 8th grade friends. Um, you can see... You'll find a lot of sort of those repeating things, some different topics here. I really like the middle school homepage. I always feel like there's lots of little nooks and crannies for kids to get into and look around at. Um, so we'll take a look at some of those in just a minute. What I want to do here in that search box, I'm going to plug in Abraham Lincoln. And again, click on that magnifying glass in the search box. And here's my search results page, which we saw earlier. But as I mentioned, it's kind of less colorful, less clouds and trees and hills, um, and more sort of re um, subdued for our older students. Uh, again, at the top, you can see the three different levels. And then on the left-hand side, you can see the different content areas. Um, images, videos, all those things that we saw earlier, those same kinds of content pieces are still going to be here as well. We've got a lot of, especially um, for presidents, things like that. We have a lot of really interesting um, photographs. And of course, these all count as examples of primary sources, right? Because they are actual images from that event. So these count as a primary source. If you're ever looking for some images that are primary sources, Britannica has got uh, you covered there. And then we also have a nice collection of primary sources and eBooks. The eBooks and it's kind of confusing. The ebooks are primary source documents that happen to be books. So they're just very long primary source documents. So it's not like Britannica ebooks. It's just, you know, a book that maybe Abraham Lincoln wrote 
is considered a primary source, so it's, in collect it's in included in that collection. But we can see we've got some really great pieces here, um, state of the union addresses, inaugural addresses. Um, I like the idea of, um, you know, we're talking about Lincoln's presidency, taking a look at all of his, with your older students, kind of taking a look at all of the different State of the Union addresses that he presented to the country. And, you know, what was he kind of really digging into? What was he really concerned about that year for the country? What are the really big things weighing on his mind? Um, so it's a really neat way to kind of take a closer look at some of these historical uh, events. We've got the Magna Carta in there, all kinds of interesting pieces. Uh, we also have uh, the Emancipation Proclamation here, of course, the text of that. But then we also have an image of the actual Emancipation Proclamation as well. So when you're talking to your students about that, you can show them the actual document itself, an image of that actual document, and then pair it with the text. So it can make a really interesting lesson. Um, and then, of course, down here, we've got the lesson plans of Lexile filtering as well. That's really important for a lot of people. Uh, let's go into the article here about Abraham Lincoln. You can see him at level two, which is middle school. I'm going to go into the level two article about Abraham Lincoln. And we briefly saw this when we looked at the elephant article for middle school. But this is what all the middle school and high school articles will look like. This is the sort of layout that they have. Um, very easy to find what you're looking for. You can see across the top we've got related images and videos, related uh, topics, which again, especially when you're talking about something like Abraham Lincoln, which is a very rich um, topic, you can kind of go through and see some different topics you can bring into the conversation. And of course, the teacher tab is there as well. Um, below that, on the article tab, we can see we've got a little uh, table of contents for students to use. Up over here on the right, we've got all those uh, tools that we saw earlier, um, adding to My Britannica, the print, the automatic citation, the translation tool, the read aloud, and then the increasing and decreasing the font. Over here under this arrow, kind of tucked away under this blue arrow, is where you can find the email option and the two Google options, Google Classroom and Google Drive. And then this is really important here. I love this piece. Of course, we talked about this earlier. This is how you can change the reading level. Um, so if you've got students at level two and they want more information, of course they can go up into level three and find more information. Um, but if you have some students at level two or three and they're struggling with the text, they're not going to want to go into the elementary interface. So what they can do is go to the middle or high school level, plug in their search, and then click on this number one and they're looking at the elementary article, but they're not having to look at the elementary interface. So any students working on this don't have to feel nervous or like they're sticking out because they're looking at something different than their classmates. They can just calmly and coolly and collectively just go in and get the information that they need without having to feel like they stick out at all. So it's really that social emotional learning piece, which is really important as well, um, has been kind of tackled here. And then when they're ready, they can go back into level two or level three, wherever they started off from. Uh, and then again, as I mentioned earlier, we do have the read aloud, which is right here, this little speaker. And we also have the quick click dictionary. Um, again, just double click any word to get that definition. Any questions about the middle school article content or tools? Like I said, these are the same tools you just looked at, the elementary, they're just kind of arranged differently. Nope. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Is there the Google Drive yes, on so image as well? Uh, not on the images. It's just the Google Classroom on the images. But you, you can save those any images from Britannica. You just have to right click in the photo, save it to your computer, and then drop it into a Google Drive. Um, I'm not sure if that's something that they're going to be adding in. There's, they're in talks about it right now. Um, but as of right now, for Google Images, or the, I'm sorry, for the Britannica Images, you can uh, just put those into your Google Classroom. Hopefully down the road, Google Drive, but as of right now, just Google Classroom. 
And then for the articles, however, tucked under this blue arrow, you can find the Google Classroom and the Google Drive option. So any of the, artic the articles can go in either way. Do you have a question, Oscar? Yes, uh, there's a question uh, from Christine. How are you navigating from one resource to another? Using the browser back button, for example, from Emancipation Proclamation out to view the image of the EP? I have two tabs open. Yeah, so <laughs> that's that's my <laughs> easy answer. You can go back and forth, but you can also, you know, left click on anything to open that into a different tab. If you're using Google, which that's what I always use. Hope that answered your question. Thank you. Um, any other questions? Okay, I'm going to go to the middle school homepage and show you some of my favorite things here. Um, up here on the top right of the Google um, our, of the middle school homepage, we have Explore Britannica. These are great tools you can use every day in your classroom, every day in your library to get your kids using Britannica School. Uh, so we're going to talk about these in just a few minutes. I want to show you a couple of other things first. Um, if I scroll, well, actually, right here at the top, you can see. We've got this image here, and it's always something like, oh, a question with a link to an article, something like that. Um, but you can see along the bottom, we've got these four little dots. Every day, and I wish this was a kind of a standalone thing, but that's not the way it's built. Uh, but every day, this fourth dot will give you a brand new vocabulary word. So if you want to challenge your students every day with a new vocab word, or you want to do it in your morning messages, or you want to, you know, put it up on the wall and give your kids a tootsie roll every time they say the vo vocab word or use it in writing. This is a great way to kind of encourage students to use new words. Uh, today's word is milieu. 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 And it gives its definition. <coughs> but every day you'll find right there this fourth circle. And it will just be on the middle school homepage. So um, it's kind of hidden in there. But if you want to do that, that's where you can find that. If you uh, have any questions about that, let me know. I'm, I'm hoping when they start doing some, you know, upgrades on Britannica School, I'm really hoping that they make that its own standalone thing. So I think that's a really neat tool. Uh, as I scroll down, we have a biography of the day. Today is Jim Henson's birthday. Um, we all love Jim Henson, so you can, again, share that with your students in the morning and their morning messages or just put it up on the calendar. Um, you can kind of go ahead and see. Uh, and then we also have some recommended U.S. primary source documents been pulled out and put there so it's easy to access. And then we have these at a glance articles. And at a glance, it's just basically a collection of, and again, I just opened that a new, a new tab, um, basically just a collection of links to other topics and other articles. So we've got one for Hispanic heritage, we've got one for African American history, we've got one for mathematics, we've got one for Greek um, uh, Greek mythology. So we have all different types of topics here. So if you're ever curious, just go up to the search bar at the top and just Google um, at a glance. And it will show you all of the at a glance articles that we have. Quite a few here. And these at a glance articles you'll find just at the middle school and elementary school levels. That's what at a glance mean. And then below that, we have our new and revised articles. And I always like to show this to people. You know, Britannica has been around for 250 years. A lot of people think we're just kind of an old and dusty resource, and that's not the case. We've got an incredible team of editors that edit and revise the information that we have. They are adding new information all the time. And you can see here um, every day, what are some of the new topics that we're working on? What are some recently updated articles that we have? Uh, things like that. And we have this on the bottom of the home page for the middle school and for the high school. So if you're just kind of curious, I want to share that with your, friend, with your friends, with your students, that um, this is an updated resource. <laughs> It's not old and dusty. Um, you can share that with them so they can see for themselves, you know, oh, yeah, this, is, this has been recently updated. And you can even see some of the more recent topics we've had. Any questions about any of those things I just shared? Okay. So now we're going to look at Explore Britannica, and I love these tools. Um, so first of all, these are going to be on the bottom of the elementary homepage, just kind of, I showed you those just a second ago, and they're going to be toward the middle of the 
high school homepage, and they're over here at the top of the middle school homepage. And these are just little tools, again, to get your kids using Britannica, that you can use Britannica in your own library. Um, just a really easy way to use Britannica School. So first of all, we have our little article browse. And I love this for students uh, collecting information for research. Maybe they have to do a research topic and they don't really know what to do it on. They're looking for inspiration. They can come in here and browse around and see some very interesting topics. Um, I also like this, of course, for teachers as they're planning units, they're planning lesson plans. They can come in here to see some different related topics. Um, what I like here is that we have a couple of different topics that fit in nicely with STEM. So here we have uh, life processes, science and mathematics, technology, plants and other living things. So all those things can kind of combine and be used um, for different STEM topics. If I click on technology, I can go into agriculture and agricultural technology. And here we have 25 different articles, people, inventions, different types of farming methods um, uh, that relate to farming and farming technology. That's what that article browse will do, just kind of browsing different topics, different articles available in Britannica School. Um, if you know what topic you're looking for, you don't have to browse in the article browse. That's just if you're kind of looking for inspiration. If you know what you're looking for, just go to that search box at the top. Below that, we have images and videos. Same idea, but instead of linking you to articles, it's going to link you to videos. So there actually is a really interesting one here at the American Revolution. Uh, we have a video here about muskets. So we hear about muskets, we read about muskets in the American Revolution, don't really know what they are, what they sound like, or what they look like. So there's a little video of some reenactors using a musket. So kids can kind of get an idea of what that was really like when they're reading about, you know, the Revolutionary War or even the Civil War. So that's one example of any kind of little video that you can find in there. Below that, we have the biography browse. And I love this. You can browse different eras of time. You can browse national and cultural associations. So for example, your French class, maybe they are looking for to do research reports on people who are French or from France. Then they can browse this list of people from France and kind of pick out some different names from there. And they can also browse by what people might be known for. I really like this one. So for example, if I plug in civil rights, pops up here in this little drop down list. I can click on that. And this is bringing back people related to civil rights issues around the world. So not even Amer just American civil rights issues, but worldwide and throughout some different um, eras of time. But it's a great way to kind of get your students to be familiar with additional names. You know, we need to study these topics. It's the same, you know, 10 to 15 to 20 names that we look at every, every year. So this is a great way to put some new names in front of students and get them learning about some uh, different, different struggles. So I'm a big fan of that. We have all really interesting topics, science, mathematics, a lot of um, art and movies, uh, cinematography, animation, all kinds of really neat topics in there. We have the World Atlas. We're going to come back to this one because this is my, my favorite and everyone really loves it also. So it's hard to draw attention once we get there. Um, so we're going to come back to that in a moment. Um, we've got the Compare Countries. And this is just a side-by-side -side comparison of any two countries. Um, so I like the idea of, let's say you're getting ready to start your lesson or your unit about Japan. Then you could do a quick side-by-side -side, um, comparison between Japan and the United States, just to see governments are different, leaders are different, the size is different, population, whatever, whatever other things might be different between the two countries. You can kind of browse around there and see how they are a little bit different, just to set the stage for students learning about a different country. So that's the compare countries. And then Tour of the USA is just the same as the World Atlas. The only difference is that Tour of the USA just looks at the United States. It doesn't look at, you can look at the entire world if you want to, but it just opens up on a map of the United States. So it's maybe not so overwhelming, especially for our elementary friends or our pre-K friends. All right. So let's take a look at this World Atlas. I know I keep looking at here even though it's right in front of me. Um, the World Atlas is a map that's powered by Google 
but it's um, combined with the great Britannica information about places all over the world. So right now we're looking at just the plain map. In the lower left corner, you can see there's a button that reads satellite, so you want to make sure you turn on that satellite map. And I've got this beautiful satellite map that you, your science teachers can use in their classrooms, or even your literature teachers can use in their classrooms. We're talking about the setting of a story. They can talk about you know different places around the world where the story takes place. How does that place affect the behavior of the protagonist um, or the events that happen in that story? Um, how do different places around the world affect the history that happened there? Um, so you can just use this map for all kinds of really cool things. You can zoom in using the plus you zoom in and zoom out using the plus and minus buttons over here on the left. So as I zoom in, you can see it's kind of zooming in on Ghana. And it's going to give me a summary of that country. It's going to give me a profile of that country, government information, population, that kind of thing. And then it will give me any related articles for that country as well. So just a real brief like overview of that country before we even get into it. And then you can zoom in to different areas of that country. So there's Kumasi. You can see some really amazing images. And because we are looking at a Google map, You'll notice in the lower right corner, there is a little orange fellow. And you can actually pick him up and drop him anywhere in the map where you find these, oh, any, you can, where, anywhere you find blue dots or blue lines. And right now, this is the only blue line here. And it gives you this image of this street in Kumasi in Ghana. So you're talking to your students from San Diego, California, and you can show them what this country world miles and miles and miles away actually what it kind of looks like there or you know what their streets are like or what their buildings look like or what their you know do they have lots of oceans do they have lots of whatever it might be that you're looking at so you can really show them show them the world um if you want to get out of this picture you can see up here in the top left foot in um corner there's a little back button and that will take you right back to the map where you jumped into it uh, so to speak Within the map, you can see there's a little um, search box right here. I'm kind of moving my uh, cursor around it so you can see what that looks like. That, where it says find a place, you can type in any city, state, or country into that box. Uh, you can't plug in a landmark, so you couldn't plug in, you know, um, you couldn't plug in the Statue of Liberty, for example. But you could plug in New York, New York, and you could, you know, maneuver your way to the Statue of Liberty. So if you are going to use this to share it with your students, just make sure if you're looking for a very specific place that you know ahead of time how to get there. Um, <laughs> that's key, right? Um, otherwise, the kids get excited and everyone gets excited and they start shouting things out and this just becomes kind of crazy. Um, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to plug in, let's say, uh, I'll do Paris, France. And here we have, we're kind of hovering over Paris, France here. And I can zoom in. There's the Louvre right here. I can pick up my little guy. And again, the blue lines, it's a, a kind of an outside picture. These blue dots will be a, a more up close picture as well. Sometimes they're inside, sometimes they just will give you a more um, ground view of what of that area. So we're, <laughs> so we're looking at the Louvre, but there are the, there they are, waiting in line. But there are those, you know, pyramids that are so famous. Um, so you can see all kinds of really cool things. Um, again, just make sure you know how to get to it. If you're talking about community with your younger students, <coughs> you can plug in San Diego, and then, you know, they can Exactly. Yeah. Oh, yes. Right. They get so. They, oh my God. My friend lives here. There's a mall. 
there, all that stuff. I was working with teachers one time and, um, and they were saying that she was like, Oh, I just found my house. Oh, there's my new white truck in the driveway. <laughs> I was like, okay. So the images, they're not live, but, um, Google supplies us with images every so often, maybe like once a year, they'll give, uh, give us a new batch of images. So sometimes you might see images that are outdated. Like if there's a mall now in a place where there used to be just an empty lot, that's the reason. We just kind of depend on whatever Google wants to share with us. But it's just very fun. And kids get into it, the adults get into it. And again with the, um, the little guy in the lower right corner, you can drop him anywhere where you see those blue lines or blue dots. There are some places around the world, political places, uh, places in the Middle East, some places in China that you're just not going to be able to look at. Um, that's not our fault. It's not Google's fault. It's just the world's fault. Um, but yeah, so this is really fun to play with. What's that? Yeah. You're trying to do Oh, really? Oh, my gosh. Oh, that makes me nervous for those people. <laughs> that's like a Tom. Just Okay. Well, one of the cool things here is if I go into um, Egypt, if I go to Cairo, Egypt, uh, you can see, you can get like right up here to the, uh, the Sphinx, but you can't get past that really. It's very interesting. Um, let's see, where are they at? I'll have to find that. So I'm gonna give you all, just a, I'm gonna try to find the, um, the Sphinx up here. Oh, here there. Um, I'm gonna give everyone here just a few minutes to go ahead and play around with, if you wanna do a research on the middle school about any topics, by all means, go ahead. If you wanna play around with any of those um, Explore Britannica tools, now is your time. If you're a high school person and you're tired of waiting, by all means, please feel free to go over into the high school level. We are gonna cover that in the next, um, next session. But now I'm going to give you another five minutes or so to just kind of play around with all these tools that we just um, took a look at.
Uh, another two minutes and we'll get back to it. Mary Beth, I got your email about the standard, so I'll forward that along. Yeah. Oh, okay. There wouldn't be, there shouldn't be anything, right? Oh, okay. Okay. It was arts and just it's, it's the visual, performing visual performing arts. Okay, so make sure I'm using the right uh, verbiage. Thank you. Um, did anyone run into anything interesting or that they have questions about? They're just enjoying browsing around. It's it's really set up well for, to, for browsing, I think. I think it's really, when I first started with Britannica, like the first week, they're just like, well, look around and see what you find. I was like, okay, <laughs> I could do that. <laughs> and there's a lot of really interesting things in there. Okay, uh, it's 11.25, got, we've got about 35 minutes left. And we've got a lot to, to get in there. So let's go ahead and get back to it. Uh, did anyone have any questions about anything they saw on the middle school homepage? Yes. Okay, what's your question? The uh, question that's a great was question. just for the folks at home. The question <laughs> yeah. was for the folks at home. The question is why should I use Britannica versus Wikipedia? And the answer is because I can go on Wikipedia right now and write an article about you. You can't go to Britannica and write an article about someone. So Wikipedia is not really, Britannica is a very rigorous, you know, um, very rigorous process. And Britannica, uh, Wikipedia does not. It's open source, anyone can write anything, but with Britannica you know you're getting, you know, credited, researched information. So um, Wikipedia, you know, it's great they've got, if they've got footnotes, that's wonderful, you can go to those footnotes, but as a whole, Wikipedia just is not, something you use for research. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> there you go, yeah. Yeah, teachers will just not accept a Wikipedia article, hopefully. Uh, that's a great question, thank you for, for asking. Uh, any other questions? That's funny, I haven't had that question in a little while. I used to get that question a lot when I first started because that's when Wikipedia was really um, just getting uh, off the ground, so I like answering that question. Um, okay, so now we're going to head over to the high school homepage. And again, to do that, just click where it says Britannica School in the top left. And go right to the high school. And again, you can see it's a little bit different. There are some different things here and there. Um, we'll get to that in just a moment. I just want to run a quick search here on the term Adam. And again, the reason I want to do that is just to show you what the search results page looks like. Just looks like just exactly what the other two look like. Um, the article itself, you're looking at the article about the atom, the Encyclopedia Britannica article about the atom. So as you know, this is going to be a very dense, very uh, well-researched, very particular article. There's going to be a lot of information in here. And that much information can be overwhelming for someone who is just casually looking for some information about an atom. So I just want to show this, point this out to let you know, you can always dip down to level two or level one. Even if you're not a student with special needs or special reading needs or anything like that, you're just a regular person looking for some information and you don't have to dig through all of that text. You can always dip down to a different level here. Okay, and then I also want to show you um, at level three, because we're at the level three, there is no teacher tab up here. We don't have the the, um, the standards of the at the high school level. So what you can do is, if you want to find out what the standards are for this article about the atom at level three, find that article, then click on that number two, and go into the tab there, and then plug in your state and your grade level.
it should work uh, that you can plug in your grade level and subject area but for some reason it's giving me a little bit of attitude right now so anyway that's your workaround for the high school um, standards I'm really hoping one of these days they will change their minds and give us high school standards but it's been over 10 years now and they haven't budged yet so I don't know if that's ever gonna happen um, but if you get more pressure from people then maybe they can change their tune uh, anyway so this is an example of a high school level article the high school homepage is a couple of things we do uh, the stay in history so again you can do that every day for your morning messages and we also have in their words on the high school level and these are just um, kind of quotes from notable people so if you want to use any of these as writing prompts with your students these are a nice collection of different quotes from notable people uh, below that we have all those great Explore Britannica tools the World Atlas tour of the USA the um, compare countries is down here as well below that we have flash facts uh, these are just the last few days worth of flash facts and then we have this day in history as well and also the new and updated articles uh, we have news from the New York Times I thought they had actually gotten rid of all of these for some reason it's still popping up here um, I do want to caution that if anyone is using that it the max is out at like 10 or 12 clicks and then you can't use it for the rest of the month. So that's why um, it's not my favorite thing, simply because I think it's kind of like dangling a hot dog in front of a, a hungry dog. Like, it's not fair <laughs> to, to dangle. And you food. were talking about the New York Times. Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, everybody should know that um, in California, your public libraries, you can get day passes for the New York Times. Um, check out your your local public libraries that includes uh, I believe your high school students as well so um, I've heard, I think the Washington Post is another one that has something for students there's something accessible there for students I'm not, I have to, I'm not exactly sure what it was someone just mentioned to me recently yeah I would I would definitely encourage yeah. all educators to take a look at and play around with those different opportunities that are happening at the public library level and uh, some schools the San Diego City Schools apparently also subscribe or have access, so you can also check uh, while you're at school. So it's IP authenticated. Um, yeah. So, but those are all you know. Keep in mind that those kind of things. So you may not end up hitting um, a a max um, monthly max on some of those kind of, of resources, depending on, or you may find alternative means of getting access. Always remember your public libraries. There's a lot of great resources that you can access through there. You got a question right behind you, Mary Beth. Uh-huh. Does that mean that I personally, in my account, click 12 times, mm -hmm. or does that mean my students? So if I have the, a class of 30 that want to click question. on that same article, uh, how does that work? I'm not. That's a good question. I'm not sure if it's that if it's that per computer or per account because that would if it was you know your entire district account it would max out you know the first half hour or the first day of the month. Uh, so I have to find out about that. If you want to send me an email, I can find out about that. But, but the whole point is just don't rely on that to like as a, something you can use all month long because it will tap out very quickly. Yes. Um, we have another comment or question. Uh, my guess is it's per IP address. That's so what I was you thinking. Your browser, you can restart oh, okay. clicking it. It restarts it. Okay. Browser. Yeah. So the rec recommendation was to clear the browser. Yeah, that's how they okay. Things, so it's your IP address. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I thought that they had remo removed it because I haven't seen it in so long. Uh, it's, people had, yeah, so I'm surprised to see it pop up here. I'll have to look into that. Um, I also want to make sure to point out the new and updated articles here. So you can see already today our incredible editorial staff has been busy at work uh, updating some articles here for you. Um, any questions about the high school homepage? Again, your best bet is just to sit with it and play around with it and look at all the different links here to see how they can best suit you, your teachers, and your students. What I want to talk about is My Britannica. I know a lot of people have questions about My Britannica. And My Britannica is right here in the top right corner. My Britannica is optional, it's not mandatory. So I don't want anyone in here panicking, thinking that they had to get all 300 of their kids set up with a My Britannica account. You absolutely do not have to. In fact, I wouldn't even recommend that. I think it's a great tool for teachers, but I think, you know, if you um, are thinking that you've got to get it all set up for kids, I think that's going to be more stress than it's honestly worth. Um, but I do think it is an incredible tool for teachers, and I'll show you why. 
So uh, it is an account you have to create. So you can either sign in with your Google or you can create an account down here at the bottom. And when you create your account, we just ask for you to create a username and a password and then retype your password to make sure that's the same thing you thought it was. Uh, and then we ask for your email if you're an educator. That way we can get this back to you if you happen to lose your username and password. Um, if you're a student, we don't re require that from you at all. Not a problem. And then you just create your account. And I'm going to log into my account so you can see what it looks like. And I'm logged in and I have a couple of extra options up here where it said before log into my Britannica. Now it says by content, lesson plan browse and sign out. So the lesson plan browse, most of you have probably questions about that. These are lesson plans other teachers have uh, created while they are using my Britannica. Um, we kind of thought that this would be a really rich collection. It did not fill out as much as we thought it would, um, which is understandable. We thought we were kind of you know, trying to help teachers out, but it's understandable that teachers and librarians don't want to write lesson plans in three and four different spots. So that makes sense. Um, but there are some great ideas in here, so by all means, you can browse by topic area. You can also browse by grade level. And if you see one that you like, you just can just open that right up and then read through it. And you can even save that to your own account. So I just saved this to my own My Britannica account. So that's what the lesson plan browse is. Uh, for my money, the, the bulk of the, the meat and potatoes of this is going to be here and under my content. This is where you can do all of the work. So um, there's the lesson plan that I just added in here, the lesson plan browse. Um, but basically, anytime I click on that star within an article or a photo or a video, it's going to land here in my collection of favorites. And you can see here I've got 314 items in my collection of favorites. Um, articles, photos, all kinds of different things in here. So 314 is a lot of things to dig through if I'm just looking for one thing. So what I can do now, instead of doing that, I can actually create these resource packs. So I can kind of um, band the content uh, together uh, in, under different titles. So if I want to, let's say, go, I have one here about plate tectonics. This is my resource pack about plate tectonics. You can see I've got some different articles in here. I've got levels one, two, and three. I also have assignments in my little note column for each of those. And I can actually add in my own documents. I can add in my own graphic organizers. I can add in my own PDFs. I can add in my own Word docs, things like that. I can add my own pieces in here to this uh, resource pack. I can also rearrange the order that you see the resources and then like I said I can edit the text in these boxes and put notes in there for my students and when I'm all done here and I want to share this with my students I can click on the link here on the right that says share pack so when I click on that link that says share pack it provides this URL for me this URL is uh, static and unique, which means that it will always direct people to this launch pack about plate tectonics. But if I change anything in that launch pack, that link won't change. So I can post it online and leave it there. And then when I share that link with my students and they go home and they click on it or they go to study hall and they click on it, they will see all of the pieces I pulled together for them. They can see all of those notes I've left here for them. They can even access all of those additional pieces I added in, but they can't make any changes to it. So this is a great way to build supplemental materials for your classroom or for your library. If you know, for example, in the fourth grade, all the students are doing California and they're doing missions, you could create one of these up for um, that group. And then when they come in and they start their research, you can um, share that link with them and they can all have access to the same information. Yes. So are you saying that you
change the information on here and the link is still good yes and it'll exactly. show the changed and can add in new information or remove old information and that link will stay the same yes They don't, so that's a great question. Students don't have to have their own My Britannica account in order to look at a resource pack that you shared with them. They just need to be logged into Britannica school. They just have to be logged in. Yep, and it will, yeah, so they will see this. They'll see this, but the minute they try to click on a link, it will ask them to log in. Mm -hmm. So as long as they know how to log into Britannica school, no problem. Keep in mind, we've been trying to, uh, we, we get a lot of questions from schools about um, the difference between, you know, like how can everybody share a login? And it's not that they're sharing a login, they're sharing access. And so that you have an entire uh, unit, like a school district, that has particular access information, but that's totally different than an individual user account, which is what my Britannica would be. So as long as they are properly given access, uh, remotely or by IP authentication on campus, then they're fine. It's this is this is actually a really important topic for anybody dealing with technology and media literacy right now because the training is don't ever, which is rightly so, to tell students don't ever share your username and password. So any educator should also be very clear about the difference between a username and password and an access name and then a code that would go with it. Um, a question that we get frequently is, well, can kids share, you know, the username and password? And if, you know, if they're working on a report together and two kids want to create an account together and run that account together and use that, they, then that's fine. But like Mary Beth was saying, if a teacher has her account, then she should not be letting out her, you know, My Britannica username and password to students. That's his or her account. Okay. So, like I said, you can share this with students. They don't necessarily have to have a My Britannica account in order to see this. They do need to know how to access Britannica School, but um, I think they'll, that shouldn't be a problem for most people. Um, if they do have an account and you share this with them, they can actually make a copy of this resource pack, and then from there, they can make their own changes to that copy if they want, but the original resource pack that you've shared with them will never be altered unless you alter it. Um, I also like that as a way for teachers and librarians to use this resource. You know, if you get together all the, you know, third grade teachers and you take a look at the science curriculum, you can kind of pass out different topics. Each teacher, you know, takes a turn, makes three different resource packs, and then when they get back together, they can share those links with one another, and then you've got resource packs for your curriculum for the entire year, and you've only had to do two or three instead of having to do, you know, 14 or 15. Um, so I really like that idea. I think it's a really neat way that teachers can really get a lot of use out of this as well. Um, and I think it's just nice and easy if you've got a new student coming to school and you want to get them caught up. It's easy to put one of these together and, and make sure that student is on the same page. If you are talking about a, to a topic in class, a subject in class, and there's one area that you really want to lean into, but you don't have a lot of information in the textbook about that topic, you could create a resource pack about that with more information. Um, so there's a lot of different, this is a great use for supplemental uh, purposes, for getting kids caught up. You've got, you know, if you want to try flipping the classroom and you want to send students home with information to look at at home, this is a great way to do that. Um, so there are a lot of different ways that you can consider putting this into, into play in your classroom and library. Um, any questions before I show you how to actually put one together? Yes. If they say, oh, can you, they down, the question was, if they save a resource pack, or they make a copy of the teacher resource pack, can they access it when they're not online? Uh, the answer is no, it's all, it's up in the cloud, so they have to be online in order to access it. If they want to, when they're, you know, looking at the resource pack, they can go into each article and then download those pieces to their Google Drive or to their computer, but the pack as a whole is just available online. Okay, so let's take a look at how to, I'm gonna click on where it says my content, how to put one of these uh, bad dogs together. Tell my computer is getting old because things that used to be really fast are really slow now. Just me and my computer. All right. Uh, so again, you can see here I've got all of my favorites, and that's anytime you click on that star and add it to your uh, My Britannica. That's where it's going to land. And then over here are all the different resource packs you can create. So if I want to, I can 
create a new resource pack. And let's see, I'm going to do one about the Panama Canal. Type the name and add that in. Now you can see I've got zero items for the Panama Canal over here. So I'm going to go to my search box at the top. And you can go to any home page, or it does not matter what home page you start at. And here is an, uh, the level three article about the Panama Canal. I definitely want to save that. So here's that star I've been pointing out to you. This is where this comes into play now. Uh, that star, I can click on this star. And it tells me that the star has been added to your favorite. So the star is in my collection of favorites now. So I should have 315 pieces in there. And I can also add this to an existing resource pack if I want. I'm going to put it right here in the Panama Canal resource pack. I can also create a new resource pack on this, from this page as well. So, you know, if you're looking at different articles and you think, oh, that's great, I can use this for, you know, I could create a resource pack about this topic, then you can kind of create resource packs as you go along, or you can create one and add to it. It's, everyone is different. Once that's all filled out, just click on the X here in the top right of that little pop-up, and that closes out. Um, you can also go into the article and find that star from within the article. You can add in images. Let's take a look at some of these images that we have here. Add that in. And what I really love here, like I mentioned earlier, it does not matter what level you start your resource pack at. You can pull in resources from across all levels. So especially for you elementary folks, if you find a great you know, image at, the, at level three, but you're an elementary person, you can still pull those into your resource packs with no problem. Um, let's go to level two here. Pull in a video. Now when I go back into, I've got a couple of different pieces in here. So now when I go back into um, my content, up here in the top right, I can see in my favorites all those pieces that I just added in. I've got four new pieces in there that I just added in. And over here in my collection of resource packs, I can go into my Panama Canal resource pack and see all those pieces in there too. And of course, like I mentioned earlier, you can rearrange these so that they, they are in the order that you want. In that column on the right-hand side, you can write in little notes or assignments, questions you might have for your students, additional reading. And even, uh, you can also put in you know, links to other uh, websites. And the links won't be hyperlinked. Uh, but at least the link will be there so kids can copy that and drop it into a new uh, tab if they want to. So you can put any, any kind of text you might have in there, you can, you can put there. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, you can actually add in your own content um, by clicking on this orange um, Edit and Add Content button. And if I scroll down to where it says Upload Your Document, that's where you can put in your own pieces. So I've got a lot of... Um, graphic organizers here. And so let's do a little timeline of the, and now I can use that, or my students can use that when they are doing their assignment. And make sure to save that change. And now when I go back into that Panama Canal resource pack, I can put that note in, or I can put that assignment in here. Um, let's see. Create. Whatever you want to put in there. And then again, whenever you're ready, you can 
share that pack. There's that link for this resource pack about the Panama Canal. And then you can, this is a, a link like any other kind of link. So you can put this link in your uh, class or your uh, Blackboard account. You can put it in your Google Classroom account. How you can any way you would share a, a URL or a link with your students. That's how you can share this one. And it will take them to this page. And they can see all that information. And then they can continue on with their assignment or their project. I have a couple questions back here. Yes. Is it possible once you've added things to a resource pack to rearrange the order that they're seen? Yes, absolutely. So that's a great question. It's kind of hard to see. I think um, when you're looking at it up close, it's easier to see. Uh, but over on the right-hand side, um, there's this little kind of gray bar. And then in the middle, there's like this little group of ten, eight or ten blue dots. And if you use your little mouse, it looks like a little hand, you can hold on to that and kind of drag those around. So yeah, you can rearrange the order that way and put them in whatever order you think is appropriate for your students. But it's kind of hard to see up there on the, on the board, but that's a great question. Any other questions? Yes. When your students click on the pack, they can see the resource pack too? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. The question is, if a student clicks on a resource pack, can they go in and change the um, the level that they're looking at and the answer is absolutely so if a student goes into this article here and they see this level three article about the Panama Canal and they need to slow it down a little bit they can drop down to level two or down to level one if they want yeah so students can change that reading level if they need to yes another question um, are, the notes in the are the notes in the resource pack are they for your eyes only or are they for the students? They're for whoever is looking at the resource pack. Okay. So if you put notes in there and you share it with your students, then your students will be able to see them. And then do they have the option to like do their own annotations within the articles if they're like logged in on their own Britannica? Oh, um, yeah, so if they, if they have, um, let's see, I'm trying to think, if I'm understanding you, do you mean if they're logged into their own account and they yeah. saved a copy of it? Yeah. Yeah, if they've saved a copy of the resource pack that you shared with them, then they can make annotations in the in the column on the side. They can erase the, your original notes in their in their version of it and then put their own things in there. Exactly, it's just a copy of the original. Mm -hmm. They can do whatever they want with it. Any other questions? So I would say if this feels like something you were excited about and you really want to think about using it, go for it. If it feels like it's going to be more work and you're not really interested, then don't worry about it. It's optional. But I do think it is a really neat way, especially if you're, you know, um, I know a lot of librarians work very closely with their teachers. and They do a lot of, you know, um, curriculum building and things like that. So if you, that falls under your umbrella, then by all means, share that with your teachers. I was just going to do that. Yep. Okay. We've got five minutes left, so I will show you that. Uh, I think you're going to be okay, um, and I'll be here all day long, so if you want to stop by and see me afterwards, I can also walk through this with you. Um, but you'll notice up here, when you're on the home page, you're logged in, and you're on the home page of Britannica, uh, Britannica School, you'll notice over here on the right, it tells you you also have access to Escolar online, and that is the Spanish um, database you have access to as well. A lot of people ask if this is just Britannica School translated into Spanish, and the answer is no. We actually have a dedicated teams um, of native Spanish speakers who, who write up these articles. So these are articles written by and for native Spanish speakers. Uh, we have two levels. We've got primary and secondary. A lot of the tools we looked at at Britannica School are going to be here. So as you can see, for example, we have the World Atlas here. So you can still, those um, teachers working with um, Spanish-speaking students can still utilize this tool, which everyone really likes. Um, we also have, you can see Animal of the Day, some other things down here, some different search um, subject browses. We've got some of the things that we saw at Britannica School are still going to be here. Um, across the top, I'm going to open that search box, run a search. And again, the search results page looks, some things look similar, but it is um, overall different. Uh, you can see here is the article, the elementary, I'm sorry, the primary article about theater. Again, you can chunk the information here. 
One of the things we had a question about earlier was the read aloud. And we added this over the summer. So if it's a little bit bumpy or rusty, hang tight. And my guess is that they're going to be um, trying to uh, kind of smooth it out over the next year or so. Un teatro es un lugar a donde las personas van a ver obras y otros espectáculos. La palabra teatro también puede hacer referencia a cualquier actividad relacionada con la producción de un espectáculo teatral. But as you can see, it's as it's being read out loud, it highlights that sentence. Um, we don't have the um, quick click dictionary, um, but we do have, let's see, if I can find a word here. Here we go. Uh, this will give you the Spanish to English translation, which I'm not thrilled about. I'm hoping that they can find um, a good Spanish dictionary for the quick click dictionary tool because I think that is a really important tool. But here we've got the Spanish to English dictionary, um, which can be very helpful. You just double click, yep. Uh, and then over here on the right, tools we've seen before, we've got um, the print, the My Britannica, the automatic citation, increasing and decreasing. We've got the, uh, the um, Google Classroom, and the Google Drive, you can add, so you can add your articles there. Um, My Britannica, you can use the same username and password that you use for your My Britannica account. Will also work for your Spanish um, My Britannica account as well. But it is not the same collection. So if you create uh, a My Britannica resource pack in Britannica School, it's not going to necessarily appear over on the um, on the uh, Escolar. You're going to have to create one specifically for the Escolar um, as well. But you do have that ability to do that on both. So that's the primary, and then the secondary. Um, similar search result page and then those tools across the top here are the same as well so if you're familiar with Britannica school you have no trouble working your way through the Escolar what I do really like also um, here in the secondary home page we have a new and revised article over here as well and we also have uh, news from BBC Mundo. So again, that might be something that's lacking for a lot of younger um, native Spanish speaking students is just kind of current event topics and things like that. So you can always come over to Escolar, the secondary um, page, and we've got some great articles there from BBC Mundo, just to kind of keep them up to speed and things happening around the world. So it's great, I mean, and also, not just for native Spanish speaking students, but for those students learning how to speak Spanish, this is a great tool for those students to have access to as well, because they're, you know, doing um, reading in, in real time. Any questions about the Escolar? And again, I'll be here to the very, to the end of today, so if you have any questions that pop up over lunch, please let me know. Yes, we had a couple of questions over here. Um, is, the, is the content as extensive? It's not as extensive. Um, pretty, from what I understand, though, it's the things that are covered extensively in, in classrooms in the U.S. You won't have really have any trouble finding that kind of information um, in, in the Escolar. Uh, you should be pretty pretty well covered. Are there levels to the article content? Uh, no, but just how we have the primary and the secondary. If you want to, what you can do is from the search results page, as opposed to from the article itself, but from the search results page, you can um, kind of see between the two articles. So here's secondary. If you're curious about the primary, just click on that button there. And I'll show you the primary resources. So you can kind of go between primary and secondary, but it has to be from the search results page. Any other questions? You guys are being really patient because I know that you all know that lunch is here. <laughs> okay. Um, you mentioned earlier that if we want to add Britannica access to Clever, we need to contact Britannica's technology yes. folks. If you want to email me, I can forward that directly to Jim, or else he's also there at edsupport at eb.com on the back of your handout. And his name is Jim. He's wonderful. Um, but he just forward all that information to him, and he will get you up and running. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions over here? Okay. 